national testing? Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's separate. It's like first semester, second semester. Oh. That's what it is. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. I might even sit it from the front, but you can't really see. First lesson in Algebra 2. You should be excited. Let's put our name on our paper. That's the first thing. So these are notes, and anytime we do notes, you can always write on them. Okay? Homework assignments is what I don't want you to write on, but you can write on notes for sure. Devin, I'm going to sit beside you. Is that cool? Okay. All right. So in case you have forgotten how to solve a system in two variables, we're going to review that first. If you remember how to do it, great. Um, please, again, please do not rush ahead. This is kind of a big deal. I need you not to rush ahead while we're doing this, all right? So the first thing when we're solving a system of two variables, remember we need to either get our x's to drop out or our y's to drop out. And you guys had problems like this on that review that we did yesterday, right? We had some problems like this. You can always choose whether x's or y's to drop out. It doesn't matter. We need to look for ones that are already opposite signs. So if you look at this example, the y values are already opposite signs. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are going to multiply. We're going to get our y's to drop out. So we're going to multiply the top row by a 2 and the bottom row by a 3. Okay, and we're going to do that so that we can eliminate our y values. Now, this is what I need you to understand. I expect, because I know what's coming up, I would like you to please write your answers to the side. Okay? Do not write underneath because I know what's getting ready to come forward and I understand how crazy this can be because if you write four equations on top of each other, you're going to be in a hot mess. All right, so let's multiply our two through the top row and we get 4x plus 6y equals 24. And when I multiply a 3 through on the bottom, I get 15x minus 6y equals 33. Okay, then we're going to add the two rows together. Okay, so go ahead and add the two rows together. So I should get 19x equals 57, because these cancel out. Well, that's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Yeah. That green? Okay. I'll change colors. So if I divide by 19, can you see that blue better? That's better. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We get x to be 3. Is that what you guys are getting? Yep. Yes. Okay. No, that's great. X is 3. Someone raise your hand and remind me what we need to do to find the Y value. Brianna? Plug X in. Okay, we're going to plug X in. Okay, excellent. Does it matter, Brianna, whether we plug it into the top equation or the bottom equation? It doesn't. Which one do you want to use? Okay, let's use the top one. That's less negative signs, right? So I have 2X plus 3Y equals 12, but instead of X, I'm going to plug in the 3 value that I found for x. So 2 times 3 plus 3y equals 12. Go ahead and solve that for y. You all can solve equations now. Yeah, that's a great question. We're going to get to that in just a second. Thank you for thinking of that. So we should be getting y to be 2. <clears throat> the question that Brianna just asked is, should we write this in an ordered pair? Does anybody know why we write this in an ordered pair? Because if I were to graph these two equations on like an x and a y plane, I have no idea what just happened. If I were to graph these two equations on an x and a y plane, Wherever these two points cross would be an X and a Y point. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. Okay, so that's why I write them as an ordered pair, because that's where they would cross at. 
Okay, so we write it in alphabetical order. And so we had x comma y, but what was our x value? 3, is that right? 3 comma 2 is going to be our final answer that we're looking for. Okay, so you're just going to write in alphabetical order. So if they gave you the variables a and b, you would still write a comma b. Okay? All right, any questions so far? No. We're doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, there are going to be three different types of variables that we're going to, or three different types of answers that we're going to look at. I have to move my screen down. That was the hardest part. Okay, the first type of solution that we're going to have is one that we just talked about, and that is one solution. So where it says number one, that's what you have to write. One solution. One solution goes right here in this blank. And if you have one solution, that means it's going to look like an XY pair. But if you look down at the problem that we're getting ready to do, there are three variables. Do you guys see that? Don't be intimidated. You got this. Okay? So instead of just X comma Y, we're actually going to have X comma Y comma Z. So when we have one solution to an equation, that means we're going to have a value for x, a value for y, and a value for z. Does anyone remember the other t another type of solutions that we can have? Isn't it Crystal? Infinite solutions? Infinitely many, right? So infinitely many. And this is the symbol for infinity, a sideways 8. When you're doing the problem and you get all of your variables to cancel out, you get 0 equals 0, then that means that your solution is infinitely many. That's what an infinitely many solution looks like, okay? If you get all your variables to cancel out and your numbers cancel out to be 0, then it's infinitely many. The third type is called no solution. And if you're working the problem and you get your variables to cancel out, but you get a number... Okay, come on in, Cynthia. If you get a number like 0 equals 5, then this is a no solution problem. There you go. Okay, so this is also an answer that you might have where your variables are going to drop out and you get a number. Okay? All right, as we go through this, I need you to stay as organized as I am staying on this paper. There's a reason that I wrote the problem in the middle. And it's because we're going to use both sides, okay? So I want you to use both sides as I am using both sides. Please, please, please do not get frustrated as we go through this. This is your first time to see it. This is exactly what you've already been doing, except we take it up a notch. Okay, so this is exactly what you already know how to do about solving equations. You're going to eliminate. We're just taking it up a notch. Okay, so just like with the other problems with an X and a Y, you can choose what you want to start with. If you look at this problem, do you guys see that my Z values are already opposite signs and they're opposite numbers? Do you guys see that? Okay, so what I would like for us to do is we're going to take the first two and I'm going to group them together like this. <clears throat> and over here to the side, I'm going to write step number one. And I'm going to write those two equations exactly as they are over here. So negative 2x minus 5y minus 5z equals 13. Negative 6x minus 4y plus 5z equals negative 21. Okay, so I'm just writing them off to the side. Let's add them together. I know that these are going to cancel. I get negative 8x minus 9y equals negative 8. Okay, are you okay so far? Negative yeah. 8x minus 9y equals negative 8. <coughs> now I'm going to pause there, okay? I'm going to go back to my original problem, 
and I'm going to find another two equations. If I eliminate z first in step number one, then I have to eliminate z again in step number two. Okay, so whatever you eliminate first, you also have to do that to eliminate second. If we look at the uh, first and second row, do you see how the z values are already opposite signs? Yeah. They're just not opposite numbers, right? I have the positive 2 and the negative 5. What did 2 and 5 both go into? 10. 10. So that means I need to multiply this top row by a 5. Okay, so put that off to the side, and I need to multiply this middle row by a 2. So this is step number 2 over here. Let's go ahead and multiply the 5 through. Be careful of the signs. Negative 20x plus 30y. I'm multiplying a 5 through the top row. That's what I'm doing. Plus 10z. Okay, multiply the middle row by a positive 2. And you guys can check my math as I'm going. Z values cancel. And I get negative 24. So you should have <coughs> negative 24x plus 20y equals negative 24. Can someone check my math? Is that what you guys are getting? Did you find your mistake? Ah, yep. So negative 50 plus 26 is a negative 24, right? Mm. We've got to be really careful when we're doing this. Okay. So now our third step. Anybody think of maybe what our third step might be? Okay, to solve for either x or y. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this equation and this equation down. This is going to be our step number three. So on step number three, we're just going to write this top of each other. Negative 8x minus 9y equals negative 8. Negative 24x plus 20y equals negative 24. Okay, now what do you think we need to do? Right, we're going to have to eliminate between these two. So if we look, do you agree that negative 8 could become a 24? Yes. Right? So that means I would multiply the top row by what? Negative three. A negative 3. Good. Now, again, we are still writing out to the right. Do not write underneath it. We're going to write it out to the right. We're multiplying the top row by negative 3. The bottom row is going to stay the same. Someone please check my math as we're going to make sure I'm doing it right. I'm getting the same answers as you. I make mistakes too. Unintentionally. So I have forty seven Y equals zero. Is that what you guys are getting? That's okay to have that. 
Okay, if I want to solve for y, what do I need to do with that 47, Emily Heggie? What do we do with that 47? Good, I'm going to divide each side by 47. But what is 0 divided by anything? 0. zero. So my y value is 0. Put a box around that. Okay, what do I need to do next? Okay, get our x value or our z. z value. Any ideas how I need to do the next part? Because if I put 0 into one of the top equations, I'm still missing x and z, right? So where could I plug 0 in for y so that I could find one of the other variables? Into one of the original. If I plug it into the original, I'm going to be missing still the x and the y, right? Or two other variables? Plug in problem three. I could put it into problem number three. Okay? You can plug your y value into one of these two equations, right? Because if you plug y into one of those two equations, you're going to be able to find x. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Right? Either this one here or this one here. And it doesn't matter which one you choose. Which one might be easier to handle? Problem number one, the, black, the one in the black, right, because those are smaller numbers. So this is going to be step number four. And if you need to make yourself a note, it's fine. You can write plug in 4y. So I have negative 8x minus 9 times, what was our y value? Zero. Zero equals negative 8. Okay, that cancels, right? And so I just have negative 8x equals negative 8. We divide by negative 8, divide by negative 8. What's negative 8 divided by negative 8? 1. One. Mm-hmm. Correct. We would have two variables. Yeah. So Brianna's question is a good question. Why can't we plug it back into the original? And that was because if we plug it back into the original, right, we can figure out what this y value is going to be, and we'll get that one, but we still don't know what x is or what z would be, right? And so we would still have two variables that we wouldn't know. So that's why we have to plug it into one of the ones that we have reduced it down, okay? But now that we know x and now that we know y, now what can we do, Elena, do you think? Put it back into one of the originals. So now that you know two, to find the third one, you're going to plug it back into the original. So this is step number five. I know, that's why there are many steps. We're trying to stay organized. Plug X and Y back into original. Now, does it matter which of the three to plug it back into, do you think? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Which one do you want to use, Tish? Mm -hmm. The second one. Oh, you chose the one with all negatives? Wow. You're brave. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to plug it back in. I, in the future, I would choose one that doesn't have very many negatives because then you're less likely to make the mistake. But we're going to go with Trish, Tish's brave step. Negative 2 times my x value, which is 1. Minus 5 times my y value, which is 0. Minus 5z equals 13. Okay, so we just, Tish chose the middle equation up there. Again, you can choose any of the three. So let's go ahead and solve this out. I know that this cancels. And I have negative 2 minus 5z is 13. So we add 2 to both sides, negative 5z equals 15, divide by negative 5 and we get z to be what? Negative 3. Negative 3. Alright, 
So now how do we write our final answer? Ordered pair. Ordered pair, but now we have three numbers, so it's really called an ordered triple. So we'll write them in X, Y, Z order. So one, zero, three. Negative three, excuse me. All right. Now, typically, your first problem will not take you 15 minutes. <laughs> okay, but because you'd never seen this before, I wanted to go really slowly so you knew what to look for, okay? So if you follow these steps each time, you should be pretty good to go. This is a bad lesson to be absent for, so thank you all for being here, all right? Okay, so let's turn the page over. We have another problem on the back. So that we're all on the same page. I'd like you to eliminate um, S first. I want you to eliminate S first on the back. Okay, so flip it over. I want you to eliminate S. So the first step is to find any two equations to eliminate the S value. Actually, pause. Sorry. Let's eliminate y. I'm sorry. There is no y. Just kidding. R value. I just look back at my notes. Let's eliminate r first. Now I'm on the right page with you. Eliminate r first. <laughs> okay, so again, please keep yourself organized. So the first thing I would do is I would maybe pick these first two equations and I would multiply the top one by a 2. So if you are choosing a different path from what I did, that doesn't mean your path is wrong. It just means your answer is going to look a little bit differently. But ultimately, we should get the same answer. Okay, so for my second step, I'm going to do the first and the last two. The first and the last two equations to cancel out my R's. And I'm going to multiply that top row. If I'm going to do the first and the last, I need the top row to be a negative 6R. So I'm going to multiply the top row by a negative 6. Okay, so I'm doing the first and the last row as my step number 2. And I'm multiplying the top row by a negative 6 so that my R's cancel out. What? Yeah, but whatever you do on the... Yeah, so Chris asked a good question. He said, didn't we just do the R's? And the answer is yes. But for step number one and number two, you have to do the same variable. Okay, otherwise you're not going to be able to pull those two equations together. So a negative 6R, positive 36R, I'm sorry, 36S, 
minus 18t equals 102. 6r minus 2s minus 4t equals negative 20. Again, if you chose a different route, we should ultimately get the same answer. Okay, so who remembers what my step number three is? Chelsea? You bring it to the middle. Yeah. Okay, I bring those two equations to the middle, right? Okay. So my step number three is going to be to bring these two equations to the middle. Okay, so I have my two equations in the middle. What do I need to do with these two equations then? Who remembers what I need to do with these two equations? Rihanna? Okay, does it matter whether I eliminate S or T in this situation? Does it matter? Okay, so let's eliminate T. All right, so I want that 11 to also be a 22, so that will work nicely if I multiply the top row by a 2. All right, so if I multiply my top row by a 2, or yours is the bottom row, that's fine. Yep, by a 2, then that should eliminate. Remember, you need to write out to the side, not underneath. Okay, because writing underneath is going to give you four equations all on top, and that's going to be a mess. And what do you notice is happening? Are you guys getting that everything yeah. is canceling out? Yes. Okay, so if everything is canceling out, let's look back. I'm getting zero on this side, and I'm getting zero on this side. What type of a solution is that? Infinite. Infinitely many. So I don't have to go any further in this problem. I know that there are infinitely many solutions. And I am finished with this problem. I don't have to take it any farther because if I get to a situation where I know that my variables cancel out and my numbers cancel out, then this is infinitely many uh, solutions and we're finished with this problem. Okay, any questions on that? All right. <laughs> I just wanted to show you what one looked like that was infinitely many. Okay? All right. When are we ever going to use this in real life, Miriam? Well, I'm glad that you asked, because here is a word problem in which this could be done in real life. Listen, if we're going to be really honest, you probably won't ever use Algebra 2 in real life unless you're going to be a math person, but you will use critical thinking skills, and that's what a lot of these story problems are doing, okay? So, just so you know, you don't ever have to ask me that question. You don't ever have to tag me on a picture in Facebook that says, Haha, another day went by and I didn't use Algebra. Okay, like, you don't need to tag me in those. <laughs> Because I'm teaching you critical thinking skills, whether you realize it or not, okay? So, that's how you're going to use Algebra 2 in your real life. All right, I'll step off my soapbox now. Okay, Mark wants to buy some pies for his classmates, and he has a budget of $82 to spend on $5 apple pies, $4.50 banana pies, and $5.50 chocolate pies. He wants to buy 16 pies total for his classmates. That is definitely not going to be enough. 
and he must buy as many chocolate pies as apple pies and banana pies combined. I don't know about you, but sometimes when students read this, after the first sentence, they skip to the next problem. Okay, so I have a, a kind of a thought process and a strategy to break these story problems apart. We're going to have three equations, okay? We know we need three equations. We need a money equation. We need a simple equation. And then we're going to use what we call a complex equation. Okay, so we're going to have three different types of equations. We have a money equation. We're going to have a simple equation. And we're going to have a complex equation. All right, so what are the three things we're dealing with here? Apple pies, banana pies, chocolate pies. So we're going to let A be the number of apple pies. B is going to be the number of banana pies. And C is going to be the number of chocolate pies. This is called defining your variables. That's what this is over here. Defining your variables. What does A stand for? What does B stand for? What does C stand for? Okay? So in the money equation, what is a money total up here in this problem? Finding the totals in the, in the word problem are the easiest things. 82 is a total. What is another total in this problem? 16 is another total. Okay? So 82 is my money total. So I'm going to write that on my money equation line. And you can use the dollar sign or not. I don't really care. <laughs> okay, so if 82, what are some other money things that I know? $5 for what? Apple. And do we know how many apple pies we bought? Yeah. What did we call that? What do we let that be? A? Variable. Just a variable A. So we're going to have 5A Plus another money was 450B, so 4.5, you don't need the zero, B, plus 5.5C. Okay, so there's my money equation. So up in my problem, I'm going to mark this out because I've already dealt with this. Okay, 16 is another total. So this is going to be my simple equation. Every one of these word problems is going to have a simple equation where the total number is a number, but then the number of apple plus the number of banana plus the number of chocolate, an A plus a B plus a C. We call that a simple equation because it's just A, B, and C, right? Nothing else, just our A, B, and C. So each time you do a story problem, you should have a money equation. Notice all the money goes together in one equation. A simple equation where you add all of them together. Okay, so that's going to be this one. He's 16 pies. Okay, and then my third equation, I need to buy as many chocolate pies as apple and banana combined. How could I write apple and banana combined? A, B. A, no, A times B? If I combine our ages, are we going to multiply our ages together or add them? We're going to add our ages together, right? So if we combine apple plus banana, I should get chocolate. Okay, so this was maybe our complex equation. If I add apple and banana together, I should get the, the chocolate. However, this does not look like the rest of them, right? Because chocolate's on the other side. How can I move chocolate back over to A and B? How can I move C over there to A and B? Good, subtract C. So I'm actually going to subtract C and put it right in there. And if I subtract C, what does that give me on the right side? Good. I heard someone say it. Zero. And now I have three equations that I can work on. What might be the easiest one to eliminate? What do you see first that you might be able to eliminate? The second and the third one, because look, they are both a C that's positive and negative, right? So I want you to do the first one. Number one over here. Grab those two equations. I want you to go ahead and work that one out. Okay, don't forget, what is A plus B? 
Jose? Hey. Okay, what is A plus B? Or A plus A? 2A, right? Don't forget about that. A plus A is 2A. Pull them off to the side here. Write this one down. And then pull these two off to the side. Write them over the foot of Do not try to do all your work within this. Okay, that's going to be confusing. Pull them off to the side. I understand this is a lot of paper space that we're using here. But that's okay. So A plus A we know is 2A. And what's B plus B? 2B. 2B. Yes, that is the question. Okay, so we're going to leave that one alone. What other two do we want to grab? We have to use the 5.5. We got to use that. So I would say maybe the top and the middle. top and the middle. So if we use the top and the bottom, they're already opposite signs, right? Okay, so we need to multiply the bottom row by 5.5. I'm going to have you guys do this. This is step number two over here in the corner. Okay, the top and the bottom row, multiply the bottom row by 5.5. You guys can do this. So we're not changing the top row. We're just going to write it down. Oh, 130. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. Don't just stop there. So I wrote the bottom one down. I'm sorry, I wrote the top one down. I'm going to multiply the bottom row by 5.5. What's zero times anything? So I have 10.5a plus 10b equals 82. Crystal, what's step number three? It's really important to keep your paper organized. Okay, and so what are we going to do to eliminate? Which one's the easy one to eliminate? Which one's the easy one to eliminate there? B, B right? Because, yeah, I can multiply the top row, not just by 5, but what kind of 5? A negative 5, right? Because if I multiply this by a negative 5 right here, it's going to be canceled. Okay? So we're going to multiply that top row by a negative 5. Remember to write them out to the side, not underneath, because you're going to confuse yourself. Write them out to the side, not underneath, because you're going to confuse yourself.
Does anyone solve for the variable yet? I'm going to erase mine over here to the side. So you're going to make some more room. So I get negative 10a, negative 10b. What's 16 times negative 5? 80. Negative 80? Yeah. So then I get 10.5a plus 10b equals 82. 0.5a equals 2. What is that? 4. 4. So my a value is 4. What does that mean? If a is 4, what does that mean? <coughs> a is 4, what does that mean? What was a standard for? 4 apple pies. 4 apple pies. All right. If I have 4 apple pies, where can I figure out another thing? Plug the 4 and for a. Okay. Play, plug the 4 and for a. Let's do that over here in this side on step number 1 right here. Let's plug in our 4 for a there. So 2 times 4 minus 2b. We're going to figure out how many banana pies. Mm, I love banana pie. So 8. Oh, is it a plus? Is that what you said? I think you're right. Was that a plus, guys? Yeah, that was a plus. You can't have negative pies. That wouldn't make sense. I would be pretty mad if we had a negative number of pies. Okay, so we get 2B to be 8. So how many banana pies are we going to have? Four banana pies. If I know four banana pies and four apple pies, how can I find the number of chocolate pies? A plus B equals C. A plus B equals C, or, right, because that's what it was in the beginning. You can plug it back into any one of these. So if we plug it back into this middle one right here, I had 4 plus 4 plus C equals 16. So I have 8 plus C equals 16. So what is our C value? 8. Now, because this is a story problem, because this is a story problem, you need to have your answer in word form as well. So what did we find here? We're in algebra 2, so we're going to write our answers in word problems in sentences as well. Okay, so what are we going to say? Okay, how many of each should he buy? He should buy. That's how we're going to start the sentence. So off to the side. He should buy. He should buy. Four apple pies. Listen, I'm writing, so you should write too. Four banana and eight chocolate pies. So when you're doing your homework, if it's a word problem, your answer needs to be in word problem form. Okay? Any questions about this? We've done three problems together. We've done each of them the exact same way. Okay, so now it's your turn to practice. Might I suggest that you write the problem in the middle of the paper like we have been doing? If you write it to the side, you're going to have a lot of work going everywhere. I've written it out pretty organized for you as far as number of steps. You should be doing the same in your homework. Okay, so if you open up your Algebra 2 book, 